What's up, nerds? Paul here at Radio Free Hammer Hall, and I am super stoked for this one. Cities of Sigmar was just released, and we got a sneaky amount of information. It's uh, kind of on the down low. They gave us a ton of stuff. So I wanted to go through everything that we got in this beautiful book and do some speculation on... Uh, how it all might be structured, what the factions need, where the factions are now, and some things that I'm just kind of hoping for, and uh, general thoughts on what the potential looks like. So, let's get into it, shall we? Alright, so here's what we know so far. They're basically basing this around the seven cities from Firestorm. Uh, and they specifically mentioned Firestorm in the article. So that's Hammerhall, The Living City, Tempesai, Greywater Fastness, Hollow Heart, Anvil Guard, and the Phoenicium. They specifically called out no fewer than seven allegiance abilities, so that would line up with allegiance abilities for each city, theoretically. Uh, each War Scroll... Uh, they said, was examined and considered for updates, and that's from uh, the lead designer's tweet about uh, the release. So that's pretty exciting that they carefully went through all of this, hopefully, and uh, really uh, took some time with each one to bring them up to date. So factions that were confirmed just in the article, uh, Scourge Privateers, Free Peoples, Iron World Arsenal... Caradron Overlords, Sylvaneth, and Stormcast Eternals. All of those as city or uh, factions that could be uh, included in various different cities. So within the article, there were also some images, and in there we also had things from Wanderers, Darkling Covens, and Collegiate Arcane. In general, they specifically mentioned humans. Dwarden and Elves being included in the book and being the main focus. And there were some displays in uh, for Open Day and that also included, in addition to all of the things above, uh, Dispossessed, Phoenix Temple, Swift Hawk Agents, and probably a couple of others that I couldn't even identify, uh, partly because I'm just not that familiar with the elf lines, and the pictures were a little fuzzy from a distance, grainy, etc. Um, everybody was crowding in to try and get a look at what was in there, and a lot of the pictures were kind of from a distance. So from the panel discussion about this, they also mentioned that they were paying special attention to cavalry, to make cavalry feel like cavalry, like what it's supposed to do, ha having good verisimilitude with cavalry. And in the article, they mentioned that some of the kits will be getting moved to legends. In other words, they'll be discontinued for production slash squatted and their war scrolls will not be available as a component of this book. That's pretty much expected. That happens with pretty much every new book that comes out that is updating a faction that it really hasn't gotten a book yet. So pretty par for the course on that particular item. Uh, as for what will be squatted, we really don't know exactly just yet, but we have some ideas of what will be there based on what we've seen so far. So just revisiting how Firestorm worked, uh, there were seven sets of allegiance abilities in Firestorm. They were sort of like quasi allegiances. They had an, a, like a battle trait, but they did not have artifacts or uh, command traits. So they relied upon or defaulted back to the order command traits and artifacts while just using these command traits. And in addition to the reroll uh, of Battleshock tests that order also had. 
So just as a quick review, gray water fastness buffed your artillery. It gave them an extra opportunity to shoot in the hero phase, and that included Stormcast, Free People, Iron Weld, Collegiate Arcane, and Wanderers in gray water fastness. Uh, Tempest Eye gave you some beginning of the game movement buffs and defensive buffs. Uh, Stormcast, Free Peoples, Corrigan Overlord, Swift Hawk Agents, and Eldritch Council. Anvil Guard, uh, it could force enemy units to retreat from combat, which was, and possibly destroy them if it forced them to go then into combat with another unit, which was kind of a wonky, weird ability. Um, so this is one of the bigger ones, Stormcast, Free People Dispossessed, Devoted of Sigmar, Darkling Coven, Scourge Privateers, and Order of Serpentis. Hammerhall, uh, just with bravery buffs and included all order except for Seraphon. Uh, no Seraphon is a theme in all of this. Pretty much all of order is included somewhere except for Seraphon. They seem to not work with the cities at all. Hollowheart. That buffed unbinding rolls and debuffed enemy casting, which is really interesting. Uh, and that sort of concept may be more powerful now in kind of the new world we live in with magic being so prevalent. Uh, so that included Stormcast, Fire Slayers, Free Peoples, Collegiate Arcane, Dispossessed, Eldritch Council, Order Draconis, and Phoenix Temple. The Living City, that allowed you to ambush units... Uh, either from the board edge or to Sylvaneth Wildwoods if they were on the table. And that included Stormcast, Free People, Sylvaneth, Wanderers, and Dispossessed. And the Phoenicium that uh, buffs the army when units get destroyed. Uh, so I believe it gave you like reroll hits if one of your units gets wiped out like for the rest of the turn. And that was Stormcast, Free People, Dispossessed, and Phoenix Temple. And as I mentioned before, it used the order artifacts and command traits and didn't have independent ones for each city. So some big open questions that we have. Uh, what sets are being discontinued? Um, we can gather from the articles and the pictures and the art and the displays what's staying. Uh... But specifically what's going, we can't really tell. We also don't know if the existing Allegiance abilities are going to be retained in some way. Uh, free people, Dispossessed, Darkling Covens, and Wanderers have their own Allegiance abilities right now. Uh, so it's a question as to whether or not these are still going to somehow exist within the Cities of Sigmar. Uh, like in addition to the city traits that we're going to get. Um, also, what parts of Firestorm are actually going to be retained? Um, whether those allegiance abilities are going to be the same, whether the factions that are included are going to be the same, how all of that kind of goes together works. Um, yeah, will the faction alignments change within them? Um, you know, will the factions that are outside of the book, like, for example, like Caradron Overlords and Sylvaneth, will they be allies rather than main components of the cities? There's kind of a lot of open questions about how this will actually be put together. Um, and I have some speculation on that later on in here. But that's uh, kind of the big open questions that we have for now. And some more kind of minor questions. Um, are we going to see faction realignment uh, or any factions being totally discontinued? Like I could see Lion Rangers getting discontinued. Um, and this is really to like curb the whole keyword bingo thing. There's a ton of factions being rolled into this and having all of these cross references between things could be really irritating if they didn't have a uh, larger umbrella sort of keywords that made things work together better. 
Um, we don't know how the artifacts and command traits are going to be aligned. They could be, you know, for free cities in general. They could be done by city. They could be done by race. They could be done by faction. Who knows? We don't really know. Um, all of those are pretty good possibilities. I have my suspicions in how it will be done and kind of how I would like to see it be done. But we really don't know for sure yet. They haven't really given us any hints about it. Um, also, will the new order factions be included uh, that were not there since uh, at the original uh, printing of Firestorm? That's Daughters of Cain and Ideneth Deepkin. They weren't originally included in there. Uh, and there were a couple of Silver Tower models uh, that didn't really have homes at, that... Uh, could get included in here. Now, in the Skaven book, there was uh, a Silver Tower War Scroll that got the axe from the book. So I'm wondering if uh, those are going to end up getting pushed to Legends, which I really hope they don't because uh, one of them's pretty good. So, and that would be really nice to have in here. So, some inferences we can make about things that are not getting discontinued. I would guess nothing in the mercenary companies out of the new general's handbook are going to get discontinued. So that gives us free guild general, outriders and pistoliers, cogsmiths, cannons, organ guns, and gyrocopters and gyro bombers. There were a few units mentioned in the article, uh, the Grunstock gun hauler and demigriff knights. The great swords are on the cover art of the book. Uh, the collegiate arcane uh, battle mage on Griffin was there, and that you know would also imply that the free guild general on Griffin was there. Uh, Nomad prince, wild riders, wildwood rangers, all in the article photo, and then in the open day displays. We saw a Steam Tank, Free Guild Guard, Celestial Hurricanum, Battle Mage, Shadow Blades, Dwarf Warriors, Phoenix Guard, Rune Lord, Iron Drakes, and probably some other things that I just couldn't identify. Because, again, uh, picture's not the best. And my knowledge of Elves, also not the best. So that's kind of a lot of stuff, and this is basically covering almost all of the factions that we know of to be... Uh, possible from the Firestorm allegiances. Like, we're kind of touching on all of them from what we see here uh, with some minor exceptions. So here's what we can kind of infer from what's in the web store currently. They kind of regrouped some things in the web store, and I'm wondering if this is any indication of how things are going to go. Right now, all of the elf factions, uh, except for Daughters of Cain and Ideneth Deepkin, are lumped into one section. Dispossessed have their own section, but it doesn't include the Dwarden in Ironweld Arsenal. Those are all included under the Free Peoples heading. Uh, which also includes Devoted of Sigmar and Collegiate Arcane. And then all of our other individual factions that have their own books are all less listed out separately. And then in the core book lore, there is a heading called Free Peoples, and we had a pretty comprehensive list of factions that are listed in there. And coincidentally, this is all of the stuff that was also included in the Firestorm Allegiances. So, Dispossessed, Devoted of Sigmar, Free Guilds, Ironweld Arsenal, Collegiate Arcane, Eldritch Council, Phoenix Temple, Lion Rangers, Order Draconis, Swift Hawk Agents, Scourge Privateers, Darkling Covens, Shadow Blades, Order Serpentis, and Wanderers. So again, that's covering a pretty broad swath of things. So what wasn't in the display? We didn't really have anything from any of the other factions that uh, have their own books. So no Daughters of Cain, Corrigan Order Overlords, Deepkin, Fire Slayers, Seraphon, or Sylvaneth. 
Um, so I think we can make a fair assumption that these armies are not going to be included with any War Scroll updates in here. Uh, Stormcast Eternals were there in the diorama, but not in the case. So I don't think they're getting updated War Scrolls. They are just kind of always everywhere in dioramas of order stuff. So I'm not really surprised about that. They just got a book, so I don't expect any updates there. Uh, they're just kind of a tag along with all things order. One of the possibilities that I was thinking is that Karadran Overlords might get sucked into this and uh, have their book update kind of happen indirectly by being in here. But after looking at the cases, KO units were missing. So I don't think that's actually going to happen. So just some speculation on how I think this might be structured. Um, I think we're basically going to keep the cities like we had in Firestorm. They're going to have their own uh, battle traits per city and different factions that are allowed to work in that city. Uh, I think they're probably going to be more or less the same as what we saw in Firestorm. And it's possible that the artifacts command traits and spell lores are going to be aligned based on the city it wouldn't be a crazy amount of uh artifacts command traits and spell lores to do that um and it would kind of make sense uh depending on how they themed them uh particularly the spell lores i think would make a lot of sense to be based around the cities because that's kind of i believe they're all in different realms so having different spell lores that are kind of tied to the realms would make sense and artifacts and command traits that are more fluffy and oriented towards what that specific city does could also work um and that generally fits the fluff of what's going on here I think we're also going to see some similarities to the Skaven book, where we have battle traits that are just army-wide, where you have things that apply to everything in the book. So, for example, I would expect to see everything in this book re-rolls Battleshock tests, just like we do in Order and in many of the individual allegiances already. Um, I think we might get the individual allegiance ability is still there plus possibly some others and they would similar to skaven be kind of turned on by having heroes or something like that uh, included in the army so for example if you have a free guild general in your army you could turn on great companies just as an example um this is also a way that the artifacts, command traits, and spell lores could be aligned, uh, doing it by race or faction rather than by city. Um, also, kind of could be fluffy this way, too. It really doesn't... Uh, I'm not sure which one would be more fitting. I think they could kind of go either way with this. Um, and possibly, you know, have a spell lore that is by city and artifacts and command traits by race or vice versa or any mix of those. Um, and I think by doing it this way, I think we're going to hopefully maintain individual factions being relevant and having their own identity within the book rather than having it be order soup it's going to be more uh you know oriented around which factions are you including and what abilities get turned on based on what you're including in the army so let's take a look at where these factions are now now that we've got an idea of where all of these things are what's likely being included so this is from the honest wargamer stats the most up-to-date aos2 stats um i like to point out uh just a few things here our biggest uh faction here is free peoples with 
less than 1% representation in the metagame. Out of that, Free Peoples is the only one that has seen a podium out of all of these. Most of these have really poor win rates and very poor representation. Um, possibly also included here is a lot of these that don't have their own allegiance abilities may have just been included under the general order uh, category, but that would only like roughly double the meta percentage. And without knowing exactly what's in there, I didn't want to include that in here. Uh, but I did do the math out and it doesn't change much other than the meta percentage being roughly twice as much. So most of these factions really struggle. Uh, we come up to 2.4% of the meta for all of these together, which means that if you were to go to GTs, you would have to play somewhere on the order of 40 games or eight different GTs to run into just one of these different factions, you know, if all things were just random. Uh, and if you were doing well at those GTs, you're probably never going to see these unless you get randomly paired in round one. Uh, so their weighted average win rate comes out to 44%. So this is, you know, just below that sweet spot of, you know, 45 to 55% uh, win rates. So these are pretty much struggling factions. Um, you'll see, you know, notably there's a bunch that are at 40%. Uh, Order Draconis is one of the ones kind of buoying this up with uh, 13 appearances and 49.2% win rate. Uh, a lot of this is uh, really just getting weighed down. So, what else do we know? Um, so, if you look at these factions, they're actually pulling from five different army books from 8th edition. Uh, Empire, Dwarves, High Elves, Dark Elves, and Wood Elves. Overall, that was about a third of the army books before AOS came out. So, a third of the old armies are getting rolled into one book. Um, and out of those, in particular, High Elves were really popular, and uh, they really haven't seen a lot of action in Age of Sigmar because they kind of have been left in the dust with being highly ghettoized and no real faction cohesion and no allegiance abilities. So one third roughly of the old meta game accounts for only 2.4% of the current meta which is crazy, which tells me that there's a lot of these armies sitting on shelves just waiting to hit the table. Um, out of the 10 playable factions that we have, only four of them had allegiance abilities. And out of that, Dispossessed was absolute garbage. It might as well have not even had allegiance abilities. Um, and the others were not that exciting either. So this is kind of like a big problem that was facing a lot of these armies is it, they were not really playable between their war scrolls being old and out of date and the allegiance abilities that they got out of the general's handbook generally being fairly weak and uninteresting. So I think that we have some potential here for there being uh, the, this book kind of exploding onto the scene and th this possibly being one of the most popular books that uh, has ever come out for Age of Sigmar just because of the sheer volume of armies from the old world that are getting wrapped up in here. So the challenges we're currently seeing with these factions, why they are languishing down at the bottom and not seeing a lot of play. Free peoples, they're generally really slow and their abilities encourage them to be stationary and kind of cluster their units together. 
Um, they don't have any magic unless they take allies. They have to take allies for artillery, which means they kind of have to pick one of the or the other. Um, they do have some cavalry units and the griffin that are fast. The cavalry is generally pretty bad. Uh, demigriffs are okay, especially for their points now that they keep getting dropped. Um, and the griffin's pretty good. Um, that in the more successful pre free people's lists, uh, people generally take two or three griffins to run out and be your hammer units. But it makes it still difficult due to model count to actually grab objectives. Dispossessed are just painfully slow. They have no access at all to faster units other than grabbing gyrocopters and gyrobombers out of Iron Weld Arsenal. They have no magic. They do have some resistance to magic and some ability to unbind, but they don't play in the magic phase at all themselves. Um, and their allegiance abilities are just terrible. They're garbage. Um, they really don't help them at all. The Wanderers are super fragile. Uh, they don't have a lot of really hard-hitting units. Um, and they have some good mobility tricks in their allegiance abilities, but they don't help you capture objectives because they're dropping your units all along the board edge rather than uh, to where objectives might actually be. So you kind of teleport in near an objective and then the following turn hopefully move on to that objective if you don't get wiped out by your opponent hanging out there, uh, you know, kind of camping you and then charging you and taking you off the board with all of your really poor armor saves. Uh, Darkling Covens, they really only, I mean, technically they have two heroes, but the Sorceress on Black Dragon is hot garbage right now. So their hero selection is super fragile and extremely limited. Uh, their unit selection is pretty limited and the armor saves on a lot of these are really poor and they don't have much that helps them with battle shock. They do have some good mobility tricks within the army and executioners are fantastic, but the army as a whole really kind of struggles. So all of these others don't even have allegiance abilities. Uh, Order Draconis has a really limited unit selection. Um, it's had some success uh, just because those dragons are strong. Uh, Devoted of Sigmar, again, no allegiance abilities. It doesn't have command abilities anywhere in the army at all. Uh, and it's only unit that's their battle line is flagellants which are just glass cannons and they get buffed when stuff dies so you actually don't want to activate first and since they have really crappy armor saves you might just get the whole unit dramatically powered down before they swing uh order serpentis again another really limited unit selection and they don't have magic um, and their units are not that exciting. Uh, Phoenix Temple, another limited unit selection. They do have some magic. Um, the things in there are really good, though, uh, particularly the Frostheart Phoenix and the Phoenix Guard are really strong, but it's hard to actually build an army around that uh, since their overall unit selection is so poor. Scourge Privateers, again, weak defenses, really limited unit selection, no magic. Uh, they have some movement issues. Um, it, just generally a lot of problems with a lot of these factions. Swifthawk Agents, they are generally really quick, but they have very weak defense, and they have no magic, and they don't hit very hard, and their shooting is present, but not that strong. So, overall, they're very fast but fragile and don't really pack a lot of punch. So, they also have kind of languished at the bottom. No matter how much Tom really wants to make these guys work, right now they just don't. So, here's my hopes 
of what we're going to see and some kind of speculation on what we're going to see. Um, I definitely want to see spell and prayer lures, and I do expect something along those lines to be in there. I don't know how they would be set up, but we desperately need to at least get spells in here, and we could also get prayers or runes or something for Devoted of Sigmar and for Dwarves. Um... I would love to see the artillery get combined profiles with their crew like the Celestar Ballista has. That would make the artillery a lot more playable and much, much more competitive. Um, I'd like to see some inclusion in the activation wars. Um, and I know this is a bit controversial because it just keeps stacking things on and making this whole issue more and more complex. But I do expect to see this on some level because in prior editions... Elves had always strikes first across the board, just as army special rule. So I do kind of expect that to come back in some form and could really help boost those particular factions into a much stronger uh, area of the metagame. Um, we definitely know we're going to get updated War Scrolls. They've kind of promised us this. Um, I hope that it compares with the newer Battle Tomes. Uh, we desperately need some of those wizards to be updated to be multicasters. The, the monsters in general need to be more powerful. We need some special characters. Uh, they told us that they worked a lot on cavalry to make that feel a lot more punchy. Uh, so hopefully all of that comes together and actually works well. Um, all of these factions also tend to be horde infantry factions, and I kind of hope they do something to make it a little bit less hordy, so that we're not just all moving around 200 models in these factions. I really hope we get a lot more battalions. Um, obviously, preferably ones that are actually good, and we just don't get the Stormcast treatment where we have a bunch of battalions in name only that, you know, nobody really wants to take. Uh, I'd love to see the old Free Guild battalions come back. I don't know if we're going to get that. Um, the newer version of the Free Guild battalion is just unplayable for how big it has to be. Um, this could also be an alternate way to get the old faction allegiance abilities still jammed in here like for example it, those old allegiance abilities could just become battalion abilities and some of them really kind of seem like that to begin with so i could definitely see them just being an allegiance ability rather i'm sorry a fa uh, a battalion rather than an allegiance ability uh so that we kind of retain those but they're not uh, necessarily part of our allegiance abilities to keep that a little simpler. And one thing I hope to God they don't do is mix factions in allegiance in battalions. This, I think, would be a total pain in the ass, and I really, really hope they don't do this, where you get a little from this faction, a little from that faction, like doing these things based around the cities rather than the factions, that could really be a problem, I think. I think the battalions really need to stay by faction, not by city or some other fluffy grouping of things. It just, it needs to be by faction. So I'd like to also see some other faction-only abilities start applying to the whole army or a wider range of things, you know, specifically looking at, like, the Hurricanum and the Luminarch. Um, the Hurricanum's plus one to hit affects everything, but it's plus one to cast only affects stuff in Collegiate Arcane. It would be nice to see that affect, you know, all free city, or uh, all cities of Sigmar, Wizards, uh, War Altar, same thing with its Battleshock immunity. It would be really nice to see that applying more broadly. Um, I'd like to see each of the major factions that are in here operate independently and not 
have this like need to have a little bit from every faction in order to make the cities actually work and be complete. Um, I really don't want Order Soup to kind of dominate the way this book is played. Uh, I'd really like to be able to see, you know, having uh, Cities of Sigmar uh, armies that are, like, basically free guild and basically dispossessed. You know, basically you know, what's left of High Elves, etc. All just kind of being individual playable groups. And then if you include stuff that's kind of off your main faction, it just kind of feels like an ally rather than uh, it just seeing like a, a mishmash of all of these different factions included in one thing. I really hope that they are not going to accidentally create any overpowered combos when you just mix all of these things up in some sort of soup list. I think this will probably happen uh, by accident, just because there's so many things that are going into this. This is going to be a truly massive book, and it's going to be hard to catch all of the interactions. Um, I hope they consolidate some of these factions uh, just to, like kill the ridiculous keyword bingo that we might have otherwise it, just to simplify things down bring it back into line and just kind of not feel like it's this ghettoized mess uh, really hoping for no faction terrain or endless spells i think it would be really difficult to have either one of these things for you know, cities in various different realms. You know, you're really representing seven different things in one book. So I think it's hard to have any terrain or endless spells built around that. Um, I'm hoping that the factions outside of the book are allies rather than regular parts of the cities. So, for example, what I would love to see not happen is, you know, right now Karadran Overlords are kind of struggling with their own allegiance abilities. In the previous iteration of Firestorm, they were just regular components of some of the cities. So what I don't want to see happen is have somebody play a Karadran Overlords army that is using the rules from free cities as their allegiance abilities and have nothing else from this book used. That is kind of a concern that I have. I would rather see all of those things usable as allies, but just like not wrapped up in regular parts of each city. Also, Battle Line If could be a total colossal mess if they don't do it right. Um, I really hope they don't go Battle Line If by city, or that listing is going to be the biggest headache imaginable. I just don't want to think about what would happen if we have this battle line if situation. Um, like, just just give us some simple battle line choices and a very limited amount of battle line if. We're going to have so many battle line options in here, we don't need to make this a, a crazy keyword bingo mess. So just some final thoughts on this. I'm cautiously optimistic, um, and honestly not even really that cautious. Most of these factions right now are total crap and have nowhere to go but up. They're really going to benefit almost no matter what this book gives us. So in general, it looks pretty positive. There is some risk of overpowered combos due to just the size and scope of this book. Um, they're definitely not going to catch everything. And it, that's a concern for the metagame. But um, I think, uh, you know, things always tend to sort of balance themselves out. Um, previous books that we've gotten have all been pretty solid. So I'm really not concerned about where this is going to end up in the metagame. I think we'll probably end up with a book that is kind of middle of the road. 
not really anything overpowered, again, unless some combos get missed uh, and launch some weird soup list to the top of the metagame. There's going to be some awesome hobby opportunities in here, whether you're theming your army to a city or around a race, um, whatever you might want to be doing. You've got some crazy conversion opportunities, uh, crazy paint scheme opportunities. You can theme around a realm, you can theme around a city, you can theme around a race. Um, various other things too uh, within that. You know, there, there's just so many options. I think this has the potential to bring back some old players, you know, particularly old salty elf players that got their armies ghettoized after uh, Age of Sigmar started and they just kind of threw their armies on the shelf and either quit AOS or uh, moved on to other armies and kept those things on the shelves. Um, and I think this is likely to hit the tournament scene really fast because so many of these armies exist already and they're just sitting on the shelves because they haven't been that good. I know a lot of people love High Elves. They love, you know, Free Guild, but they just have had crappy rules. So they've gone into other armies. That's I'm definitely among them. I really haven't been playing my Free Guild just because they're bad right now. Um, I would love to play them again, you know, but they need to be good first. Hopefully this book brings them into the realm of good. So that's it for now, guys. There is a lot to be excited about in here. Hopefully this has been informative, giving you all you need to know for now. As we learn new things, I'm gonna be doing regular update videos on this because I'm super excited about this book. So as we learn new things, I will be doing some updates and discussion of what we know and I will be getting that information and analysis out to you as quickly as possible when we have new things we know. As always, hit that like and subscribe button if you've enjoyed what you see, and I will see you all later.